Hi, my name is John Williams with Kimberly Nurseries, and uh, today we're gonna talk about pavers. So concrete pavers are a great option for your uh, walkway or patio areas, um, and there's a few main advantages that pavers have. First of all, pavers uh, come in a wide variety of colors and textures, and so there's a lot of um, flexibility when you're trying to match up to your house or existing uh, materials. Um, there's a lot more options available there. Pavers uh, are also a lot more flexible, uh, meaning that uh, uh, if something happens down the road and you need to change things up a little bit, or if you have some future settling that happens in your uh, walkway or patio, it's very easy to pull up pavers, uh, adjust the situation and lay them back down and have a, a patio that's as good as new. Um, with, with very little work uh, involved. One of the first things we do in paver installation is the base preparation. Base preparation begins with excavation. Um, typically when we install pavers, we like to excavate uh, down anywhere from about seven to 12 inches, uh, depending on the type of paver installation. It's important when doing your excavation not to over excavate. Um, and to, to be able to build your base up on undisturbed soil. And the primary reason for that is when you over excavate, you loosen that soil up and it's really difficult to get it compacted back to the point where you wouldn't have future settling. So the best thing to do is, is dig down, don't over excavate. If you do over excavate, just fill that over excavation in with road base and, uh, and be sure it's compacted really well. It's important when you're putting the road base in and, and uh, prior to compaction, uh, you make sure and water the road base down so that it compacts really well. Dry road base won't compact as well as wet road base will. You want to you want to get it wet to a point where it's uh, um, not not soupy uh, and not running off, but uh, but that it holds together really well. Uh, imagine if you picked up a chunk of it and pressed it in, be in between your hands, it would form a nice ball without water dripping out of your hands. Uh, the road base layer is important to have that uh, compacted really well. Um, we typically install it in two to three inch lifts um, and then run a, a vibratory plate compactor over the top of it to ensure that it's compacted fully. Anything that's not quite compacted all the way uh, can result in, uh, in settling down the road, which uh, as I mentioned is, is easy to repair in pavers, but if you don't have to repair it, it's, uh, it's best. We recommend a minimum of about four inches of road-based gravel for foot traffic and a minimum of about six inches of road-based gravel for anything that's gonna have vehicular traffic like a driveway uh, or something like that. You wanna make sure that your road base is flat uh, with also some slope uh, um, to allow for water to drain off of the surface. So the next layer uh, when doing a uh, paver patio installation is the sand layer. Uh, we'll typically take two one-inch metal pipes, lay those down on top of the, uh, the road base, uh, and then spread sand out using a metal screed bar. This, uh, this gives us a uniform depth of sand uh, for when we put our pavers on top. It's important that this depth be uniform across the whole thing, uh, because as we, as we continue in the process, the pavers will be compressed down into that sand. Sand doesn't really compact, but it does compress. And so we wanna make sure there's uniform compression of the, of the sand layer across the whole patio. After we have all the sand installed, we're able to move on to the pavers. Uh, paver installation uh, goes right on top of the sand layer. Typically, we'll start on one side uh, and work to another. It's okay to walk on the pavers lightly after you have them installed. After you have finished laying out all the pavers, we can move on to the finishing phase. The first step of this phase is uh, the installation of the containment edging. The containment edging is typically installed right along the outside edge uh, of the concrete pavers if there is no other containment. Uh, around such as a driveway, house foundation, or walkway, or anything else that you're going up against. Um, the primary purpose of this is just to keep the pavers from sliding around, and we typically will install this with 12-inch long steel spikes just to make sure that it, it holds in place for, for a long time. After the containment edge is in place, we pull the vibratory plate compactor up on top of the pavers and uh, run it over the pavers lightly just to compress them evenly into the sand layer. After the compaction, we can move on to installing the jointing sand, and the jointing sand we typically use is called polymeric sand. This is sand that has glue mixed into it to help it set up and secure the joints. We typically spread the polymeric sand over the entire surface area of the patio and sweep it into all of the paver joints. Following that, we rerun the compactor over the surface again lightly to help vibrate those pavers and to encourage the sand to get down deep into the paver profile. 
It's very important to remember that polymeric sand is activated by water. And so if you have any moisture on your pavers, uh, or if it's, if it's raining, or if there's a chance of rain, you want to be very careful when applying the polymeric sand. So after you have the polymeric sand installed, it's important to sweep off uh, all of the excess sand off of the patio surface. And it's also best to even go over that surface with a leaf blower on a light setting just to remove all of the dust and, and extra sand that might be on the surface. After you've removed all the excess sand from the surface, uh, it's best to lightly water that sand in with your hose on a, on a light misting setting. Too much water force will cause the sand and the joints to wash out and then stick to the paver surface. And so a light mist allows that water to come in contact and activate the glue in the polymeric sand without washing it out of the joints. After you've misted the patio area a couple of times, um, it's good to just rinse off the entire patio area and your pavers are finished. So that's the process of installing concrete pavers. If you could use some help installing a paver patio, please give us a call. We are members of the Interlocking Concrete Paver Institute and have certified installers on our team. And so we'd love to be able to help you out with a project of yours.